okay and we continue at the fuel line and I think we are just about ready for a test for this baby actually it might be better to tie it together like this and put this okay yeah I probably need one here though and whoops sorry sorry actually let's save this okay and the staging is gone to hell again but that is to be expected even if it is annoying as hell okay this is the first one separated then should come this one and then this one okay and then there's the lander which we shouldn't hopefully have any problems with okay let's test this out and hope it doesn't lag too badly too much fuel somewhere along the line probably means you wasted a lot more fuel getting that fuel there okay the lag isn't insanely bad it's just bad accelerating nicely this is good this looks like it might be a winner actually more boosters isn't always better that's the new philosophy I'm exploring right now so far it shows some promise so there's something really attractive about a lot of boosters even if it does end up blowing up okay 100 meters per second that's really nice that means we are going to be out of the first part of the atmosphere pretty quickly you can see it below the height meter or the altimeter I think it's called in the top middle of the screen here okay we are at 10,000 meters Okay, this is very nice. These first, this first set of fuel tanks gets us all the way out of the first part of the atmosphere. It's very nice, very good, very, very, very good. Excellent, very nice. and now we're speeding up nicely now that we've gotten rid of the extra weight okay now this is starting to look pretty good so 
all in all we have 13 engines firing right now. You should cringe right about now if you're superstitious. Rocket fuel, innocent astronauts and an unlucky number of engines firing. Now, your instinct at this point might be to turn your engine off and turn your ship because we do need to turn, but if we do that, without those vectoring engines we will have trouble turning this thing. The big ships are really difficult to turn without engine power, even if you have SAS, still a great deal of trouble. Also, by looking at the ordinary SAS forces you can see if your ship is or is not s completely stable you can measure how much stress it's under by looking at how hard the SAS is working to keep it working properly wow we actually have less fuel and less engines and we are getting up there into space with more fuel and just better equipped to go where we want to go amazing isn't it might be able to get rid of some of more of those external fuel tanks actually whoa 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 bit too close there okay we want to start burning right about now With an underpowered ship you probably should aim for starting setting up your turn. God damn it, screw you lag, screw you. With an underpowered ship you want to start thinking about a turn about two minutes before whichever point you want to burn at with a properly powered ship about a minute underpowered ship usually being something big but with small engines relatively big it's all relative anyway oh yeah I think those are done whoops I think I might have wasted a bit of fuel there. Well, whoops. I think we're doing just fine now. Okay, now the moon. The moon you want to lead by 45, about 45 degrees, which means we wait for the opposite side of the orbit for that. Because when silly glitch there with the acceleration anyway, you with an orbit you are always affecting the opposite side of your orbit yeah also these indicate the direction opposite the one you are moving and the direction in which you are moving and when orbiting burning in the direction in which you're moving stretches out your orbit whereas moving in the opposite direction shrinks it okay yeah my previous moon videos had a pretty large ship aiming for the moon and it was really hard to turn but here here it's pretty good oh yeah I think it takes the ship wobbling or turning as acceleration for some reason it's strange but and we nudge the engines online and we